And now, the host of Quirks of Israel, Reverend Peter Fast. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good to see you today. Welcome. So nice to see you. Oh, I love the outfit. Hey, Afro man up there. Great. Oh, love the bangs. Beautiful. Nice tie. Okay, but mine's better. <laughs> okay, it is so nice to be back here. Welcome to episode 13 of the Quirks of Israel. All right, today's episode is called Sarel, five weeks as a volunteer reservist in the Israeli Defense Forces. Now we don't have time to recount the history of the IDF and its incredible creation, but you should look it up. But a little about the IDF. The IDF, Tzva Haganah Le'Israel, the Defense Forces of Israel. This is Israel's defending armed forces. In the days prior to the official founding of the reborn state of Israel, defense forces of Jewish pioneers were formed, organized, and trained with the help of friends of the Jewish people, the British during the early mandate period, as well as other notable Jewish soldiers and officers who had made Aliyah or immigrated to the land during the 1920s and 30s. Most renowned would be Yosef Trumpledor, love that name, Zeev Jabotinsky, David Ben-Gurion, and Menachem Begin, and a few non-Jews such as Lieutenant Colonel John Patterson and Ord Wingate, great names, great names. The stories of heroics, danger, battles, and defense during the Bedouin uprising are harrowing indeed. Once Israel was reborn, a war of annihilation was thrust upon them, and throughout 1948 and into 1949, the armed forces of Israel fought on against five organized, trained Arab armies, the most advanced being Jordan and Egypt. Israel won after a year's struggle, and over 1% of its population killed during the fighting, which amounts to over 6,000 casualties. So the rebirth of the modern state of Israel was May 14, 1948, and the official founding of the IDF was May 26, 1948. Okay. The IDF is constantly on the front line and the defender of Israel's borders and her people. The IDF is made up mostly of Jewish Israeli soldiers, but you also have Bedouin Muslims, Armenian Christians, Druze, and others serving. You have IDF soldiers of countless backgrounds and skin colors, all serving Israel, from Russian, British, and Ethiopian soldiers, to native-born Israelis, Bedouin Arabs, and more. I even met an IDF soldier once from Japan. His mother was Jewish and married a Japanese man, and their son grew up, moved to Israel, and signed up to serve in the IDF. So a Hebrew, Japanese-speaking soldier. You have different faith backgrounds of soldiers, with modern Orthodox to secular Jews to Muslims and Christians. It is amazing. Some of the best trackers in the IDF are the Bedouin Muslims. The Druze soldiers are fiercely loyal to the nation they live in and serve with valor. And Israel is the first country in the Middle East to have female combat pilots. Now, the IDF has a number of service branches. Israeli Ground Forces, the Israeli Air Force, the Israeli Navy, the C4I Corps, Technological and Logistics Directorate, and the Military Intelligence Directorate. These forces have helped Israel survive major conflicts, such as the War of Attrition against Egypt in 1956, the famous Six-Day War of 1967, and the Yom Kippur War in 1973. As well, you have Saddam Hussein's Scud missile attacks during the Gulf War of 1991. Then you have conflicts against terror organizations who seek Israel's annihilation. So you have the IDF protecting Israel against the terror uprising of the PLO since their creation in 1963. Then you have another round against the PLO in Operation Peace for Galilee in 1982-1985, also known as the First Lebanon War where the PLO, who were terrorizing southern Lebanon and embroiled in a sectarian civil war there, were also launching terror incursions into northern Israel and shooting rockets at Israeli communities. Then you have the terrible period of the Intifadas, 1987 to 1993 and 2000 to 2005, 
which the IDF faced off against the PLO, the PFLP, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, Fatah, and Hamas. Then there was the Second Lebanon War, 2006, against Hezbollah, which is a proxy of Iran and has created a state within a state in southern Lebanon. Finally, you have numerous conflicts against Hamas, which is entrenched in Gaza, turning the Strip into a police state. Since Israel forcibly withdrew its own citizens from a small enclave of the Gaza Strip, thereby giving the entire Strip to the Palestinians in an effort for peace. Hamas was simply elected to power by the people, staged a coup against their Muslim rival, Fatah, where they started murdering them and hurling them off the rooftops of buildings. And then they weaponized the entire Gaza Strip and began launching missiles into Israel. Since 2006, Hamas has launched nearly 20,000 rockets and missiles into Israel and have set up a massive network of underground terror tunnels into Israel. So the IDF's difficult battle against Hamas has culminated in numerous operations, such as Operation Kesled, 2008 to 2009, Operation Pillar of Defense, 2012, Operation Protective Edge, 2014, and the most recent conflict, Operation Guardians of the Wall, in May of this year, 2021. Now, I may have missed a couple, but this list demonstrates two things. Number one, the IDF have been busy. And number two, the IDF, by the grace of God, have been successful since Israel is still around. Beyond many stereotypes, critics, name-calling, false accusations, and a lot more rubbish about what people or the media say about the IDF, one thing is certain. Their primary objective is to defend Israel, hence their name, and also to save as many human lives as possible in order to achieve their goal. That is amazing. How many armies in the world embroiled in war of combating terror can actually hold their head up and claim that in fighting their enemies, they were equally as concerned with saving lives, both the lives of their soldiers, the civilians of the nation they are guarding Israelis, but also the lives of the civilians living in the regions or countries of their enemies. Amazing. That's what retired British Colonel Richard Kemp, who served in years in both Afghanistan and Iraq, could declare to the United Nations that Israel is the most moral army in the world. And he said this after personally witnessing on the Gaza border as an, observed, uh, as an observer in Operation Cast Lead in 2009. How the IDF conducted itself with the impossible task of fighting against an entrenched terrorist entity, Hamas, which deliberately situates itself in heavily dense civilian neighborhoods, which is a war crime, and then launches attacks from those neighborhoods against Israel, which is a double war crime, hoping for an Israeli retaliation that causes Palestinian Arab deaths. Unbelievable. But sadly, one clue as to why this doesn't get loudly condemned by the United Nations and others can be found in the hypocrisy and double standard of this global organization who elect countries like Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and North Korea to the Human Rights Council of the UN, all massive human rights abusers themselves. And rather than hear global outrage and condemnation for making a, a joke out of the Human Rights Council, all we hear are crickets. As Sir Winston Spencer Churchill once mused, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on. Anyway, I stand with the IDF, pray for the IDF, and think they are incredible people who stand in the gap against the worst kinds of terror. All right, thank you, stock audience. Thank you for your support. So in 2003, I had an IDF experience of a lifetime. I was able to volunteer to serve in Sarel, which is an organization that the IDF and the government of Israel spearhead to give people a glimpse of what the IDF is really like. Many people who serve in Sarel are keenly interested Jewish youth from the USA, Canada, UK, or Europe, and they want to serve, but, you know, before they officially commit, they get a taste of the IDF through Sarel. Many of the, of the other people who serve are Christians from all over the world, and I was one of them. After a flurry of paperwork, background checks, and being followed by the Mossad, I mean, just kidding there, okay? Just kidding about getting followed by the Mossad, okay? No worries. I flew to Israel with a few Christian friends and my esteemed college professor of Older Testament Studies and Jewish Studies, David Dunn, and landed at Ben-Gurion Airport, where we were met by a reserve officer 
of the IDF, a South African chap who had made Aliyah named Stephen. Stephen was our madrich, or assigned leader, and a wonderful host. We ended up being stationed on a paratrooper base, which was incredible. This base was right next to Talnoff, which is one of Israel's largest air force bases. So I had the luxury of watching, on a daily basis, fighter jets taking off and flying about with fast lightning maneuvers. I mean, I was like a kid in a cupcake shop. I mean, these pilots were amazing. The base also was incredible. During my time there, 400 soldiers were in training to get their wings, and I was able to attend their first jump from large Hercules aircraft in the desert. One soldier, an American with no family in Israel, said I was his adopted brother and came running over to me to tell me about his experience jumping out of an aircraft for the first time. The soldiers on the base were amazing, men and women of different backgrounds and faith journeys, most of them between the ages of 18 to 20. So I was 21 years old, so I basically was like an old timer with one foot in the grave compared to the new recruits. But despite their age, there was a toughness and maturity about them I have yet to find here in Canada. But there was also a softness and a love of life. They would tell me how much they wanted to serve and protect their country, but then would lament about the possibility of fighting and how much they wanted peace. But I saw a pride and honor in them to serve, but also a community, like a family. Even the officers would give soldiers they knew bear hugs or friendly handshakes or back slaps. There was order, discipline, and honor, but also love, respect, and humility. It was incredible to behold, much different from other armies around the world. For five weeks, I packed and hung parachutes, cleaned up around the base, mopping floors or the ground keeping, spent days field stripping weapons to clean them, were hosted by different branches of the IDF and had tours of their facilities, met a high level commanding general who has deeply touched Christians from Canada would come to Israel on our dime to serve and support the nation. And I forged deep friendships with the soldiers. One such friendship touched me deeply, a Russian soldier named Roslin. And I was sh shocked to run into him a decade later in Yad Vashem, Israel's Holocaust Memorial. And he was wearing the insignia of a major. He had two orderlies with him, but I couldn't resist. I approached him, said his name, and with a massive smile, he picked me up in his arms and gave me a bear hug. He was a hulking man with a kind face, and he said, Peter, it's wonderful to see you, hey? Okay, isn't that a lovely story? To see the look on the faces of his orderlies was priceless. Their major picking up some Canadian chap and hugging him. Okay, now that warms my heart. At the end of our five weeks, the base captain, a man named Shlomo, which is actually Hebrew for Solomon, presented us each with silver wings, the kind that is awarded to the paratroopers for completing their training and jumps. He informed us that we were the best Sorel team he had ever had, and we were the first Christians he had ever truly gotten to meet, and he loved us. We were also deeply touched and honored, and now those silver jump wings for which I never earned by jumping out of a plane, although I, I asked and was kindly turned down, sit proudly on my desk at home in my library. Although, not right now, because here they are, as I proudly show them off. Look at that, aren't those nice? Hey, come on, come on, let's hear it for the solar jump rings. Okay, all right. God bless you, Captain Shlomo, and the men and women of the IDF. Stay safe and keep serving with honor and protecting the borders of Israel. Good job. Okay. Israel is quirky. Join me on episode 14 of the Quirks of Israel as I bring to you Jerusalem Syndrome. Is this a thing? Cheers and shalom.